Episode 4 of The Bad Batch Season 3 has come and gone, and we're here to talk about it. I'm here with Mr. Weber State himself, Tim Costello. How are you doing, Tim? Great, great. How, how are you? I'm doing excellent because Season 3 of The Bad Batch has been fantastic so far. Yes. I love talking Bad Batch with you, sir. So we're going to talk about Season 3, Episode 4, A Different Approach. So if you would be so kind, Tim, what? happened in this episode give us what happened in this episode I, I like that this episode was called a different approach because i saw the title you know when you see the titles on disney plus i'm like but it's really the different approach that that omega is taking to you know try to get out of their situation as opposed to the situ the the option that um that crosshair would take in that he would just shoot everybody and kill everybody and yes. she's like, no, we got to try something different. Um, so, yeah, so I really appreciated that. Um, I, again, as as was the case with uh, the first episode, seeing the dynamic between these two characters is just, is fun to watch. It's fun to watch because he's just like, well, I could just shoot them. And she's like, no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> That's yeah. wrong. Which was also great when that flipped and she... Oh, okay, we'll do it your like, way. If I gotta, then... <laughs> Which, when I saw that part of the episode, I was like, yes, unleash Crosshair, and he's doing it for us now. He's doing it for mm -hmm. the good guys instead of for the Empire. So I love that. Did you get a chance... Uh, we spoke off mic about this. Did you get a chance to watch Star Wars Explains recap of this episode? I started watching it. Um, I started watching it. But uh, in, in that... Uh, review that he did, which Star Wars Explained, great YouTube channel. He was saying... Gold standard because, Star Wars YouTube. 100%. Because we got those first three episodes all in one week, we got them all dropped at the same time, it felt like there wasn't as much time spent with Crosshair and Omega, just in his personal kind of opinion. Sure. And he was saying, I don't know if that's because of the condensed nature. Let's say if it was week to week, this would have been spread out over four weeks mm -hmm. and we would have been getting Crosshair and Omega, that relationship. He felt like it almost didn't feel earned at the end when we saw it, which we'll get to the ending of this episode. But sure. the payoff of this, he was like, man, I kind of wish we had just spent a little bit more time with them. So I wanted to get your personal I think, take. I think if we had, because we got the first three episodes last week, I think... Um, and we just streamlined them because we're watching all of them at the same time because they're there. Uh, but I think if if this had happened week to week, I think we would have felt the ending of this episode a little bit more. And, you know, the emotional impact was still there. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I think we would have like we would have we would have felt like we spent more time with Crosshair in his emotional headspace. Um, and there, Crosshair. I don't know if you noticed, but he was he was kind of favoring his hand a little bit a little bit more this week. Yes. Um, oh even more. Yeah. Um, like like they they didn't call attention to it, but you could tell that he's like he's got his the arm that was twitching was like to the side, like it was in mm. like it was a gangrel arm. Uh mm. so I re I really enjoyed, you know, calling attention to that. But not like not calling too much attention to it because like they could have had a, a line of dialogue where said where Omega says, "Hey, hey, Crosshair, what's wrong with your arm?" Um, <laughs> and uh, so, uh, excellent, excellent bluey uh, accent there. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and so, um, yeah, yeah, I'm glad they that they called attention to it visually, but didn't call attention to it in the dialogue because that would have mm. been just, uh, Yeah, you know, I'm really hoping that. The plot line of that, whatever's going to happen there, it ends up just being, okay, he gets his arm amputated or he gets his hand amputated and not, it affects his entire system to the point where it's foreshadowing his death in here. Because I like Crosshair. I want to see him kind of redeemed after sure. what he did in the first two seasons. So yeah, hopefully it's just a little, uh, an easy fix. We can just cut his his hand off. But we will see what happens there. But I think, you said it. The emotional impact of the ending was fantastic. And specifically, I think the MVP, and I text this to you, 
the MVP of this episode was Kevin Kiner, the composer, and bringing in Omega score and bringing in the Bad Bash theme and Cross all of those four. Yes, those. Uh, I watched the uh, the Screen Crush review of, of the of this episode, and I hadn't really noticed you know Crosshair's theme too much in this show, um, but when they mentioned it there, uh, I was like, oh yeah, that's really cool. Like that just actually, I think that's the highlight for me of the season so far is mm-hmm. that the ending encounter between those two, and when the themes are coming in and inter interweaving, that was like. There, there was not a dry eye in the house. It was uh, oh, a fantastic no. moment. Oh, and so, just so because great. We've been on this journey with them for three seasons now, and mm-hmm. we we already know this is the final season. This is the last time we're going to get to spend time with these guys. And I'm, I think, I think we talked about this on the last episode because Dave Filoni kind of cut his chops on the Clone Wars, Rebels, now Bad Batch. He's had so much time to refine, and this feels like the finished product. You know, his journey, his evolution as a creator, as a filmmaker, and as yeah. an animator just feels like Bad Batch is so far the the crowning jewel in his, in I, his cap. I would even, yeah, we were talking about Filoni's career as an animator. I would even throw in Avatar The Last Airbender in there, too. Um, because, you know, I wa- like, you see some of his episodes that he's doing there, because um, I'm Binge watching the animated series right now, and you see some of his yes, stuff he's doing there. Yes. I, as you see some of the stuff he's doing there, I'm like, yeah, I could see why, uh, why, why uh, George Lucas would be gravitated to put him in the Clone Wars because he's definitely he captures the epicness of uh, the scope of whatever battle is going on, and you also uh, ca- capture the emotion. And are we going to talk about the ending, or are we just going to beat around the bush? <laughs> Let's let's get to the ending right now because, like I said, I think that was my favorite thing of this mm-hmm. entire series so far. So, uh, yeah, let's talk about the ending. What did you think? I well, first of all, I loved it. First of all, I was surprised that we got there. This and I think this has to do, like I said, with um, with the fact that we got the first three episodes. I think that it wouldn't feel like, oh, we're already here, we're already right. together. But right. I think if it, if we had episode one last week and then episode two this week and so far and so forth. Then we had episode four in like a couple weeks. Uh, I think this would have felt like, oh my gosh, they finally got there. But it still worked for me though. It still worked for like, oh my gosh, they're together. And yes. I loved that Wrecker was the first one out of the ship. <laughs> because yes. he's like Omega's fun uncle. Um, and And he's just like, yeah, it's just like like and when a fun uncle I I, I greets their his, his, their niece after I haven't seen them. Yeah, the and he's also like the heart and soul I think of the team oh, yeah. and of the show. Oh yeah, and just love the way D. Bradley Baker plays him. Uh, fantastic job all around. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of D. You know, Bradley Baker, there was this thing that you sent me where you know like the entire cast of the Bad Batch, uh, like you know, was visiting charity, uh, visiting people for charity. And I said to you, like, what? The the, the entire two people? <laughs> because the yes. entire cast is D. Bradley Baker and um the voice of Omega, whose name is Escape. Um Yes. But yeah. Hundred percent. Anyway, anyway, so but yeah, D. Yeah. Bradley Baker is great. I love that what he's done with with uh with these characters. Uh because he because when he in the Clone Wars, um, and even like even a, to a lesser extent his stint in Rebels for the most part, they're mostly the same character, um, with some some differences. Obviously, uh, like you get to the like, like the rookies episodes, you know, with, with that clone. Oh, and I love that episode. Yeah, so good. Uh, yes. you know, like I'm gonna talk about this, but you know, the like the Bad Batch is called Clone Force ninety nine, and the name of that defective clone that was a janitor's name was ninety nine. I love it. Um, That's my I'm, wife's favorite character. Oh, uh, it's good. It's good. It's good. <laughs> Like here, what D. Bradley Baker is doing is like so like extraordinary because each character feels. Different. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. He's done a fantastic job over the course of all of the shows, all the animated yeah. shows, and even going back to Avatar: The Last Airbender, he was the voice of Appa and Momo, 
he's like the guy you go to for animal noises, like I animal know. sounds. And, 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 and even in Phineas, he's in he's a uh, Perry and Phineas and Ferb, um, <laughs> who's who's like I was telling my I was telling my wife about this, um, and because I was talking about Dee Bradley Baker and how you know he's the voice of Appa and Momo. And and he's like, yeah. And then he he does this. He does that like fun funny platypus sound that I can, I have a hard time replicating. Yeah, D. Bradley Baker is the exactly <laughs> yeah. That's why he gets the big bucks, and that's why we're here doing this podcast, right? Uh, but I think, like you said, Omega also she's done some great work. The actress is Michelle Ong, okay. and Omega has really come into her own in this season because mm -hmm. you know she was always around in the first two seasons yeah this one i like i really feel like she's a pivotal character and and she's someone that really absolutely they're for foreshadowing I mean, because she's gonna have something she, to do it later she, she had her bow and arrow last season her little laser bow right. um so she was a little bit more proactive last season because for the most part for the first season she was very much just there like you know and you had the relationship between her and hunter um which Oh my gosh! When when Hunter comes out of the ship and sees Omega, it's just like, oh, uh, it's like mommy and daughter. It's like daddy and daughter coming together. Um, and so I really enjoyed that. And then and then the clincher at the end with when Crosshair comes out of the other ship, and Wrecker and and Hunter are just staring at them. I'm like, are they gonna say something? And then the episode ends. I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> that was a great cliffhanger ending, but I, you know, I just I want to see the boys back together. I want to see the the whole, and especially now that Tech is not there, it's like yeah, every season feels like we're just getting or whittling them down, and mm -hmm. I want to get the the guys back together. So yeah, that ending to me, especially like I said with the music, it really hit home. So I really love that. Um, but also, what really made this episode fun was. It's kind of like a side quest, like a side story of uh -huh. them going off and having this adventure together, Omega and uh, Crosshair. And I thought all of that stuff was really well done. She's the, like you pointed out at the beginning of this episode, she's kind of like, the, she has a different approach. And she's one that wants to do things by the book or by the rules. And then he's like, no, let's just kill everybody. So getting that interplay between those two was fantastic. This This whole episode, I just... I loved how they played off of each other. Yeah, I I really like I really like you know seeing um, Omega kind of in that kind of cantina and doing things that like not only like she's doing things um, by the book, um, but she's also trying to find a way to get around having to you know reveal herself because uh, the, yeah. the 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 uh, the attendant asks for a chain code, which is um, a nice you know throwback to the Mandalorian. Uh, yes. and so and seeing you know where that comes in um and you know she's just like and the attendant's like is this a bribe and <laughs> she's like it can be it can be if you great. want it to be if you that's what you want to call it that's fine and then yes. she's like yeah it cost you like fifty thousand credits she's like <laughs> crap that was almost great. Yeah, felt, like she... it almost felt like a jedi might i was because we've established that that uh that omega has this like higher m count um, which they did mention again uh, at the right. top of the episode with uh, with uh, Lana Say, right? Did I get it right this time? Yes. Yay, uh, Nala Say. <laughs> I'm get it right one of these yes. weeks. I swear I will. Um, <laughs> and so, um, so Al Alana Say and um, and Hemlock have that that scene where they're talking about her empty count. And when she's ta when Omega's talking to that attendant. I thought, like, is she going to use a Jedi mind trick? Because this feels like a Jedi mind trick scene. It feels like it. Because with the way she's kind of maneuvering and and stuff. So I was thinking that there would be a Jedi mind trick kind of moment. But there wasn't. So I'm like, okay. That would have been cool. Yeah, we'll say but that. The humor later. in this. Yeah, the humor in this episode was great. But I, I think you said you set it up well. It's the foreshadowing of her being force sensitive and having a high midi chlorine account. Uh, midi-chlorian count, I guess that's why they say M count, Yeah, is great. I think that's going to be something when we get that. So, Man, I think this is just another great episode in this season. Did you have yeah. any 
other thoughts on this? Um, um, it was a kind of a, you know, not too much to dig into, but it was no, a good episode. I mean, it's, it's no episode three, that's for sure. Um, but um, I also did enjoy uh, Omega in the cantina and, like, and, you know, playing cards and winning. And then, <laughs> and then, and, and then she's, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Imperial guy is just like, like, oh yeah, she, like, she's just a good player. It's fine. And then when he finds out that, uh, that, that a ship crashes, he's, he's like, wait a minute, come <laughs> back here, come back here. Right. <laughs> I have to have your money now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And but yeah, that just, threat of the empire just felt very omnipresent. And I felt the tension when that guy showed up. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Well, we are feeling the tension because this season is getting closer and closer to the end. Uh, this is going to go until May May the 1st. Uh, so that I think that May the 4th week is when this is going to end. But right after that, if you can believe it, the next month, we're going to get the Acolyte. So some some good Star yes. Wars content yes. coming the up first here. First live so action. We'll be talking about it first live here action. on YouTube. We will be honored if you would join us. 